Hi everybody and welcome to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. For today's second video I've got posts from Relationship Advice, Am I the A-hole and Today I F'd Up. So if you want to get started with the stories then just use the timestamps below the video. Now I would like to thank all of you that support me, either as Twitch subscribers, YouTube members or even donating during the live streams. Thanks so much for your support. And if this is the first time watching one of my videos and you like it, then consider subscribing to the channel and joining us on Discord. Now let's get started with today's stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationship Advice and it's from user throwarray162072 Should I forewarned my sister-in-law about my brother's plan to leave to a different state and proceed with divorce? Honestly, I don't know what to do and I hate that I'm caught in this mess. When I was 18 and my brother was 16, he started dating this girl. My parents hated her because she already had a kid and grounded him to try to get him to break up with her. Took away his car, his phone, etc. As his big sister, I advised him to not date someone with a child so young and play stepfather. He, of course, didn't listen to any of us and when he got her pregnant, it was a wrap. My parents kicked him out and he moved in with her and her parents. They ended up getting married as soon as they turned 18. My parents reconciled around the same time and ever since my brother and her kept having kids throughout their 20s. They are now 30 with 6 kids combined. Yeah. I always assumed in my head quietly that there's no way either of them are happy having so many kids so young. I tried my best to help them whenever they had financial trouble, babysitting, etc. I'm a child-free lesbian and my wife and I are very content with our cats and dog, but I still love children and don't mind helping them out whenever I can. They've been rocky and my brother and her both confide in me as I'm close to both of them now. In January, my brother did the unimaginable after a big fight they had. He moved out and stayed with my parents for a month. This was the biggest result of a fight they've had. Since then, he moved back in and vowed to devote himself to his marriage and I hoped they would. My wife and I have been considering moving to a different city since we both worked remotely and feel like we stayed in our hometown for long enough. We want to live on the beach now. When I met up with my brother for coffee recently and told him my wife and I are seriously in the process of selling our house, he suddenly looked panic and told me I couldn't move. I assumed he meant that he would miss me blah blah blah, but he broke down and started telling me that he quit his job and is planning on moving out of state, divorcing his wife and moving on with his life. That he regrets having so many kids young and he didn't get to live his life and he met some woman online and wants to go live with her. That he just turned 30 and he's still young and is not gonna waste this last decade. And finally, that I couldn't move away because I was a stable figure in his children's lives and the both of us couldn't leave. I was floored. My brother divorcing his wife is one thing, but his plan to leave the state to live with a person he met online is insane. He begged me not to tell a soul and that when he's gone, he would tell everyone. He begged me not to move and I told him that I'm not staying here just to raise his kids and that's his job. He started crying, literally in the cafe, and got up and left. That was yesterday. I've told my wife and she thinks we should warn my sister-in-law since she has no clue. I need more opinions. Well OP, the first thing I'm gonna say is that your brother is a sorry excuse for a human being. He won't be just leaving his wife, he's going to leave six children and he has the audacity to tell you that you can't move away because you are a stable figure in their life? What about him? He's the dad, he's the figure that should be just as stable as a mom. And he's tossing his family aside for a woman he met online? He's not just a scumbag, he's an idiot. I feel like the right thing to say here is that you need to talk to your brother, knock some sense into him and if that he wants to divorce his wife, he should do it face forward. But I'm not sure that's gonna work out because if he hatched up this half-assed plan, he definitely doesn't have the spine to face his wife. Either way, your sister-in-law deserves to know what's going on, either from him or from you. 
and he can tell all the sob stories about oh how I hate being a dad so young and I can't waste this next decade or whatever. The thing is, he made his own decisions. So nobody put him in that position. Nobody forced him to have six kids. So now, in my opinion, he doesn't get to bail on them just cause he's sad he's getting old and didn't get to live his youth or whatever. I could continue ranting about this moron, but I think you guys understand how I feel about him and my opinion on this whole situation. So now I ask you guys to give me your opinion in the comment section. And in the meantime, let's move on with the community comments to see what they had to say about this. Squilliam Fancy Sun 95 says, Your brother needs to stop being a sniveling coward and properly divorce his wife. Does he think ghosting her is somehow going to prevent him from feeling her wrath when she inevitably sues his dumb ass for child support? Princess Row 123 says, I agree with your wife. He's not just leaving her with no warning, but is leaving six children for a woman he met online. This man needs to be held accountable for being a selfish prick. How can anyone do that to their children? And Dopey responds, that's what I asked him. He said he loves his kids, but he hates being a dad and that they robbed him of his youth. He was crying about how he never went to prom, missed out on the college experience, never had any fun. I told him he chose to date someone that had a baby and got her pregnant when he was just a kid himself, and we all begged him not to. He said he was 16 and wasn't capable of making the right decisions. It's a terrible life, says, your brother is a massive piece of crap. His plan is to leave, hook up with some fresh new thing, and then divorce his wife and leave her high and dry cause he doesn't want to waste another decade on her and his children? And on top of that, leave you and your wife to pick up the pieces and be the stable figures in their life? A true piece of crap. Warn his wife and don't hesitate to move and live your own life. She needs every edge she can get to protect herself and her kids and to make sure they get all the legally entitled and forced support they need from him. Well, I'm pretty sure you guys know that I agree with exactly everything that they've said on these comments, so there's no point in me remaking the points. What I will give you is curated responses from OP to the comments and questions on the thread that will give a lot more context to the situation. So let's carry on with that. I told him to tell her and he said she would try to force them to stay together and guilt him about the kids. I told him that if he's planning to leave them, then those uncomfortable conversations are gonna happen. He said once he's living with his new girlfriend is when he's gonna tell his wife. At kid number three, I spoke to him about possibly getting a vasectomy or his wife getting an IUD. At that point, they were 21 with three kids. He said that he doesn't want his manhood taken away from him and his wife was on birth control all three times she got pregnant. The BS. I definitely don't think my brother was trapped as he's avidly pro-life. There were times when my sister-in-law would speak to me about getting an abortion, but as soon as my brother and her spoke, she would realize the baby was a gift from God and he wouldn't give them to her if he thought she couldn't handle it. About questions regarding my sister-in-law being a bad person when I'm not around, obviously I can't speak to her actions when I'm literally not there. But over the years I've gotten to know her and she has shown herself as a kind but naive soul who loves her children, is back in school and is focused on her career and kids. Their relationship drama is always dumb petty stuff about finances, the kids, their furniture, flirting with cashiers or randoms, etc. And the craziest part is I vividly remember his prom night, watching him take care of the two babies and asking him if he wished he could have gotten to go with his friends because they had stopped by right before going and were hanging out with him since he was busy and he scoffed at me and called me lame for thinking he'd want to go to a school dance. Watching him cry about it in a cafe a decade and some later was very crazy. I have no clue what the other woman knows. I don't think he's worried about child support since he's planning on living in a different state and unemployed. That's what people in the comments taught me, that if you live in a different state and don't know the address of the person you're trying to file, it's hard for the government to put you on child support plus jurisdiction lines and law differences. That just disgusted me even more and convinced me I should say something. 
him purposely trying to dodge child support is sickening, especially considering I've lent him so much money so he could provide for his kids. Watching him cry in the cafe in public and beg me not to tell is the reason I told him I wouldn't say anything for now, but I still need to think about it. I've always had his back, so I know he thinks I would never tell my sister-in-law, but I feel like I should. I'm also thinking about the other people impacted by his choices as well. It's hard to balance everyone's emotions and feelings, but at the end of the day, I'd feel so guilty and I don't even know how I'd face my nieces and nephews if they ever found out I knew beforehand. Maybe an intervention with my parents and loved ones would be the best. I know telling my sister-in-law is very important. I just hate to be the one to have to rip off the band-aid for someone I consider a friend and then have to deal with betraying and losing the trust of my brother. So there you have it, the full context of everything that OP has shared with us regarding this situation. I still think the sister-in-law deserves to know, and I still think that the brother is a piece of crap scumbag. Even more if his plan is to actually just leave his wife and children without any kind of support. That's a bum move. Again, let me know what you think about this in the comment section. And now, let's move on with the next post. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's from user throwaray sister09. Am I the A-hole for refusing to take my sister and her kids in unless her husband stays out? So my female 32 father passed away two years ago. He left me and my half-sister, we both have different moms, same dad, inheritance that was equally split between me and her. My sister spent her inheritance money in just a few months. She's a stay-at-home mom with two kids and always had financial hardship. I haven't touched my inheritance money. I live in an apartment that I inherited from my biological mom in 2016. My sister sat me down to talk about her and her husband's current situation. She said her husband can no longer pay rent and they needed a place to stay. I asked for time to think since me and her husband don't get along. She said it was okay. The next day, she showed up with her tone completely changed. She said her husband thinks I'm being manipulative by taking time to think about letting them come and that my apartment is an inheritance and she's my sister. Therefore, I should share it with her and the kids. She said her husband also says that if I wasn't going to let my sister share the apartment, then I should give her my half of my dad's inheritance, saying it's not fair since my sister doesn't work, has two kids, and will soon be homeless, while I have a paying job, no kids, and a whole apartment to myself. I was speechless. I opened the argument by saying the apartment was from mom and mom never related to my half-sister, so she has no right to her inheritance. Also, she already had her half of dad's inheritance, so she can't touch mine just because her husband thinks so. She started crying, telling me to think about my nephews. Again, parroted her husband's words, saying I have two options. I either let them move in or give them support money from my inheritance. I said she and the kids can move in, but her husband? No, he's banned from my place. She pitched a fit saying she can't believe I wanted to keep the kids' father away from them. And I'm the reason they'll be homeless for refusing. But I flipped out and said that I'm not, but it's her deadbeat of a husband that she keeps repeating his nasty words instead of holding him accountable for the crappy situation they're in. I told her I won't continue to speak to her since her husband speaks for her. She left after the blow up. Days later, I discussed this with my stepmom and she said she couldn't believe I cut contact with my sister only for asking for help and that I needed to see her soon and arrange for one of the two options to be considered. Reminding me that innocent kids are involved even if my brother-in-law can be rude to me. But I'm standing my ground on not letting him into my place after what he said. Am I the a-hole? No, OP, I don't think you're the a-hole at all. You are offering your sister help, just not the help that she and her entitled husband want. Honestly, I think he's the a-hole for filling your sister's head with those entitled ideas that she can just request this of you like nothing. I'd say stand your ground. Tell your sister that she's more than welcome to stay with you and the kids as well, and in the meantime, her husband can be looking for other ways to improve their income so they can afford rent. I would think that if the main goal is for them to not go homeless, 
then this should be perfectly fine. If not, then I get the impression that this is just a way to get money from you without having to do anything, and in a few months time, they're gonna be asking for more. What do you guys think? What is your judgment? Let me know in the comment section, and let's move on with the community comments to see how they judged the situation. Bailey Blossoms says, Not the a-hole. Do not let them move in and take advantage of you, and do not give up your inheritance. She blew the money, she can get a job. Mr. Spreadham says, Not the a-hole. Your sister made her choices. Not working, having children. Her worst choice is that she's letting her husband speak for her. You have what they want, so you are in the right to give the options to them. One, stay, but no brother-in-law. Or two, don't come. If the brother-in-law is a half-decent person, he'll send his family to you while he sorts himself out. Della Evaine says, Not the a-hole. They said there were only two options. They missed the not your problem option. Literally, their financial decisions are their decisions, not your repercussion. Your stepmother can take them in. They can go to a homeless shelter. Stealing your money and taking over your apartment are not options on the table. Yelling at you should automatically equal a door slamming in their faces. If your sister starts parroting the husband, slam the door. They need to deal with their lousy decisions. And OP responds, I know, and although I was shocked by what she said, they're her husband's words and my sister can be easily manipulated. Her husband must be in her ear 24-7, so I understand that she thinks of me as unsupportive and selfish right now. And I feel bad for the kids. I really do. But her husband will never be allowed inside my apartment. OP's edits. Because I see this question being asked, my stepmom is now living with her family and brother-in-law has been in no contact with them, so it's unlikely to let them move in with them. Look, I love my sister and my nephews so much. I treat my nephews as my own kids, and I did help in the past because I know my sister and my nephews are struggling. However, I'm quite upset because of how she talked to me, but I know that it was her husband who was talking to me that day, not her, since she kept repeating his words. And there you have it, all of the information laid out in front of you. So again, let me know your judgment in the comment section, and now let's move on to the next post. This post is from the subreddit Today I F'd Up, and it's from user Urutao. Today I F'd Up by accidentally drawing a penis for my students during a Zoom class. This just happened in my pharmacology class. For my explanation, I decided to draw a blood vessel. Using the red brush, I drew two parallel and slightly curved descending lines from the edge of the screen. I tried to make it look more 3D with a circle in the end representing a cross section. As it was supposed to be a quick sketch, it turned out a little larger and more oval than intended. The result was an obvious drawing of a thick and flaccid penis sticking out from the edge of the whiteboard. I decided to pretend I didn't notice it and went on with my explanation. I thought it would be too obvious if I immediately erased it, acknowledging the accident. I attempted to make it look less like a penis by drawing some dark yellow arrows on the vessel representing the blood flow. It really didn't help as they started looking like veins and when I made some of them going out of the vessel, they definitely started looking like hair. The hairy penis stayed on the screen until I finished the explanation, but I believe there might be some prints being shared among the students by now. Oh, Opie, I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Not because I've ever drawn a penis or a blood vessel for that matter on a whiteboard, but because you were so immersed in what you were trying to explain that you weren't paying attention to what it could look like. Not that you had to have that in mind, but you know, this kind of stuff sometimes happens. Maybe you should start practicing how to draw blood vessels so that this doesn't happen to you again, or you just make it clear that you aren't purposely trying to draw a penis, but that might drive the attention of the class elsewhere. In any case, it must have been really funny for your students. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I certainly did reading them to you. So if you did, then go ahead and give the video a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become a member of our Discord community that just keeps growing and it is fantastic. And like I said in the beginning of the video, all of the relevant links are in the video description below, so be sure to check them out. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. 
It really does mean a lot to me that you guys enjoy this content, so thank you once again. And having said all that, I will see you guys in the next video.